So how then, uh, so how do I work effectively and efficiently on Microsoft Word? Uh, many researchers actually have problem in keeping um, their workflow effective as well efficient um, and to keep up with the productivity level. So in today's video, we'll be talking about 10 different add-ins that can be uh, installed into the Microsoft Word that can help researchers keep up with their efficiency as well as effectiveness, plus to increase their productivity by utilizing these add-ins. Now, Microsoft um, Word, um, as well as all the Office products like Excel, PowerPoint, do use a feature called add-ins, which I've seen that many people do not use. So if you want to increase your effectiveness or if you want to increase your efficiency and bring up your productivity levels, what you need to do is um, use these add-ins that are incorporated into Microsoft Office products. So in today's video, I'll be showing you 10 different add-ins that can help you with your effectiveness as well as efficiency. The video is coming up. Hey, what's up? Uh, Faizan here from Research Beast. Um, on this channel, I share different tips and tricks for researchers, different motivational talks, and I also talk to experts about the research methods or anything related to research. So if you're interested in content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, many of us are not native speakers and uh, we do have problem with writing or with really English writing becomes a big problem for many researchers out there. So uh, before I get into add-ins, of course there are multiple add-ins, but Microsoft uh, Word itself has become very smart over the uh, last few years and there's an um, interesting feature that is added into the Microsoft uh, Word uh, program and this feature is called editor and where can you find it is very simple you just go here um, to this main ribbon and you will see there's something called review if you click on this uh, right here in the end there's something called editor so I come to editor now of course um, uh, you need to have something written on the document for in order for the editor to give you some suggestions and this can be something about the spellings as well as grammar or clarity or those type of things now um, I must say that there are some other softwares that are out there called something like Grammarly or stuff like that that can be used for these features and maybe the power of those softwares is much better but as an initial tool you can definitely uh, use Microsoft Word's editor that can bear some good results for your write-up. Um, and um, l l let me switch the window and actually move to something that I have recently written. It's a little bit more so it would be easier to look into it. So um, let's go to review editor and then if we look here because it's pretty um, you know, it's quite a lot of write-up. It's like 2,700 words. So you can see that there is some stuff about um, uh, from the editor that can help. Now, obviously, you can change a lot of stuff. Um, you can change the language. Uh, right now, the language is set up at, uh, as English United States. Uh, so, so far, the documents look, look good on clarity, conciseness, and formality. There are some issues with punctu punctuation conventions and stuff like that. But then let's go into this. Let's say these three punctuations. So you can see that there is something here um, and some other places. So uh, those things you can obviously deal with. Um, let's go back and look at the spelling mistakes. So most of the time spelling mistakes are with the references or with the names of the authors from different countries. You can just ignore this, but it's a good way to start looking into the you know the language or the proofing of your document of directly of Microsoft Word. Um, so I just thought of putting it out there. This is not an add-in I was referring to. This is just a feature which is inside Microsoft Word and you can use it. Uh, moving to add-in number one. So let's look at, uh, but uh, hold on. So before I get into add-in, let me show you how you can actually install Microsoft um, add-ins. And what you can do is, um, just move here to insert so if you look at insert here uh, right here you would see something called get add-ins or my add-ins either of them if you click on them now since you may not have these add-ins so you just click on get add-ins and um, here it would show you my add-ins which are the things that are installed on your Microsoft Word uh, admin managed if you are uh, using your Microsoft Word as part of a school or your workplace or something like that. 
or then the store where you can actually search for add-ins and then install them now uh, add-in number one that I would say uh, it actually helps me a lot because I do a lot of statistics and oftentimes I need calculator for doing some uh, simple calculations and things like that and what I need to do is either use my smartphone to do those calculations and then move them into the word document or I have to go into the start menu uh, open the calculator that comes with the Microsoft uh, Windows and then use that um, however here's an add-in that can easily do this it's very easy and it's called handy calculator so if I go here and I just put in handy calculator search it's going to come up right here handy calculator right so all you have to do is click on add it's going to ask you for some you know and um, here you go so if you look at your screen right now here's where you have your calculator so you can do all your cal calculations or whatever six divided by nine of course it works with the num pad number pad on your uh, on your keyboard and then uh, just you know so um, that's how you need to do uh, things uh, very easy just in there on the documents you don't have to like toggle between calculator and Microsoft document so that's your add-in number one add-in number two would be um, for um, uh, something like uh, you know many people use uh, interesting features like this so I have this very interesting paper I was looking at and this is about scale development where they have used this word cloud and these days many people want to do something like this so if you look on the screen there's something called word cloud now how do you do that of course you can do this using online websites where it's easy to easy to do uh, but you don't see how it looks like on there they just develop it give it to you or you can use softwares like Envivo or you know uh, atlas.ti or something like that however you can do this easily inside microsoft word again if i go here um, into the add-ins i just go to get add-ins and this add-in is called pro word cloud so i put it here pro word cloud and it's here so i just click on add continue and here uh, so how can I create this it's easy so let's say if um, you know this is the text that I want to have word cloud for all I'll just go here and click on create word cloud and it gives me this word cloud now you can obviously change the settings you can change the color uh, so you can change the color let's say I just want to go with this light colors maximum words are 100 I just want to keep them at 20 let's say um, and let's just go and see what it gives me so here you go so here's your word cloud that is generated within Microsoft um, Office that's with your word cloud now um, the third add-in that I would recommend you to look into is called abbreviations.com and it's unbelievable how many times we use abbreviations into the document or sometimes we do readings for our work but we don't realize that uh, there's uh, a lot of abbreviations in the work that we are reading but what do they mean no idea so um, this add-in is called abbreviations.com you just go here search abbreviations.com I'm just going to search this all right here we go so I edit continue and uh, here it is now the thing is because this document is empty so I do not see anything but let's say I, I just want to create something you know like um, can you please format this into APA or what else uh, we have let's see all right so let's say we do i triple e uh, okay format i got a request from u and wto
yeah, I mean, I just <laughs> just made it up because I just want to see how we get these, um, how do we get these abbreviations worked out. So let's, I'm just going to go here to APA. I select this and here, boom, we have APA, which means American Psychological Association uh, or Administrative Procedure Act or Administrative Procedure Act or, you know, there are 96 other matches, which of course you can see on the website. However, uh, the one that they show you right on the top are the ones that are used the most out there. Um, then I go here and I select this IEEE. Uh, let's see what do we get. All right, so Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. Uh, so we, we get it. Now, obviously these are academic abbreviations. So many of you might think that, wow, this is okay. I mean, I already know this, but let's say uh, UNWTO. So what do we get here? Right, so United Nations World Tourism Organization. Again, this is an organization, so many people might say that well, what's special about this or what's special about this abbreviations.com is let's say I just go here, lol, and it just shows me that it means either lots of love or lol or laughing out loud, loud or stuff like that. So, again, it saves a lot of time while you are reading something off books or let's say research papers or places where you don't know a lot of things about the abbreviations this can help you a lot with the abbreviations all right so that's uh, number three now moving on to um, add-in number four and that would be symbol search and why is it important for researchers because many many researchers that i know are moving into things like presenting their findings or creating uh, posters or creating interactive presentations and things like that and many people don't want to go with same old stuff statistics and things like that and many people want to find symbols uh, for infographics or stuff like that but uh, microsoft do have something like that i mean you can search for symbols here so you can go to insert and you can see here something called icons so if you go to icons you can see that microsoft in itself do have something um, you can obviously search stuff here and these are different icons, which is good. I mean, they've increased the uh, library quite a bit, but of course they don't have everything, right? So you can find some stuff off here, but let's say if you want to find a much bigger selection and if you want to find something that is much more than what Microsoft offers, then you can go to get add-ins and you can try to search for symbol search. So if you look at symbol search, I'm just gonna go click on add continue and here so I get it right here called symbol search I'm just gonna click on this one um, and what do I have so here are a lot of symbols that I get now um, you can search for camera or something like that so you can find some symbols out there now again maybe the list here on this add-in is not as uh, big as some other softwares out there but I mean it can be handy you can just get in here and search for something right away instead of wasting your time or getting on other websites and you know just then leaving your work and uh, later on feeling like wow I just wasted a couple of hours finding the symbols so here's another add-in now Let's move to add-in number five and add-in number five is um, my favorite one because what happens is that uh, when you sit for a long time in front of your computer and a screen, it makes you tired and sometimes it's just difficult to read the word and try to understand. That's one reason. The other reason is that when you write your stuff, like let's say you're writing a paper, you wrote a paragraph, it just gets tiring to understand how does it sound. So you want somebody else to either read it and give you comments or you want somebody to read it to you so you can understand better of what did you write or how does it sound. So another very interesting add-in that I personally use, it's called um, Read My Document. And Read My Document is, um, uh, let me pull it up. So let's say Read My Document, search it. It's going to come here, Read My Document. All right, so um, now let's say I have uh, created, uh, I've written this paragraph, even I read it, I feel it's okay, but if somebody else would have read it for me, I would have got a better idea of how does it sound. So let's say I just want somebody to read it for me. So instead of getting somebody to read it for me, I can just use this add-in to read uh, 
for the computer to read it for me and how you can do it just select the text uh, you can select the speed of how fast or how slow you want it to be read um, and you know whatever um, sound or whatever you know you can even find people with certain accents or whatever I'm just gonna use Microsoft's Anna and play with the progression of economic value from commodities to products and services, leading to experiences Pine and Gilmore. 1998 increasing numbers of consumers look for consumption of experiences rather than the product store slash and services Charlie at all 2016. Wow, that was interesting. It sounded like a robot is reading to me, but at least it just gives you an idea of how your text uh, sounds like. Um, helps me a lot to understand how a reader would be reading my uh, papers. Um, sometimes I change my text based on what I hear. Um, so I just thought to put it out there. I think it might help a lot of you as well. Uh, Hey guys, if you, are think, if you think you are getting some value out of this video, please do not forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would also appreciate if you can share this video within your, um, within your uh, social networks or within your networks of people that may need this video. Going back to the video. Moving on to uh, the next add-in. And the next add-in that I want to show you is uh, a very interesting one. It's... Uh, something called sticky text and why do we use this it's very interesting so i'm let's go here um and let's find it first sticky text all right so i'm just gonna add it here um let me close this one and let's go here so let's say i um want to work on a paper and there's a bunch of text that I copy and I have to paste it later on. Uh, now of course most of us use control C and control V so if you control C and then you control C again then the previous one is gone and then it's a lot of mess <laughs> stuff like that. So um, this sticky text what it does is it helps you save as many copy text as possible and then you can use them later on in your document but it's not all it also helps you to find the meanings of the things that you are copying or pasting with a google search or a bing search and let me show you how it works so it's very easy how does it work it's very simple let's say i just go here and i want to say the first step in scale development i want to copy this so i select it and then i click on save text then i go and i say that um, uh, is the basic exercise oops, is the basic exercise to establish I want to copy this as well so I click on save text again so, and you see that all of these come here on the panel then I go there and I say uh, use the existing literature would be the third phrase that I want to copy so I save it here um, so all of these keep saving on the side now let's say i want to go down there and i want to start a new paragraph that says the first step in scale development is the basic exercise to establish the existing literature just i mean for the sake of making it up so what i do is i go here and i click on stick it uh, so it sticks here and then i come back and say stick this one um, and then I go and stick this one. So what happened is it just makes my life easier by you know doing all this but then one other interesting thing that you can do is let's say if you don't know what's the meaning of this one or if you want to just search on uh, this particular phrase the first step in skill development you just click on search it now here you see you have two options Bing it and Google search I mean you can use a search it using Bing which is Microsoft search engine or Google so let's say you want to do Google you Google it um, and then it just brings you directly to Google search page with the document uh, with that phrase being searched in the Google so just another way of making your life easier by using this particular add-in now um, let's move to uh, add-in number seven and add-in number seven and eight oh you know what um yeah add-in number seven is something that many of us also use from within microsoft uh, word 
and that is called synonyms or words that have same meanings uh, but you know sometimes Microsoft words uh, synonyms are very limited or if you want to search a synonym for a phrase that is made up of two or three words like for example uh, in need of or in search of something like that then Microsoft Word doesn't really work with synonyms so the other add-in that I wanted to recommend today for researchers is um, something called power thesaurus uh, so let's go here and here so I edit continue and got it so it just comes up here now we get it here on the side so now what we need to do is just maybe if I select this recurring themes and I do a search selected it would give me um, different uh, synonyms which are right here if you look common theme consistent theme and stuff like this but then let's say we select something like study and we say select so um, it is going to give some stuff to me which is here examines or investigate review and research or stuff like that of course you can pick up something from there and it's going to change the word in your microsoft document so that is another add-in that uh, can help a lot of uh, non-native english speakers with their writing and with their papers all right now um, there are two other add-ins that I want to recommend that are very specific to researchers, especially those who write research papers and things like that. Um, I normally use them, not a lot, but I do use them quite a bit and um, it, they help me uh, quite a bit with my papers, especially one of them is with searching the references. The other one is with formatting my papers. So let me show you how it works and then uh, we'll go with two more um, um, basically one more add-in in the end that is something that keeps me on track and helps me with procrastination uh, or uh, you know keeping track of what I'm doing so uh, let's go into theme uh, add-in number eight and add-in number eight is called Kenius uh, so if I go to insert um, get add-ins and then I put here something called Kenius all right so i add it continue all right so right now if you look at my screen i see it here so i click on this one so now what's going to happen is this now this particular add-in it's powered by artificial intelligence so a lot of stuff that they recommend is based on machine learning or how the system is developed but you can obviously work with that um, it gives you two options to search either research articles or Wikipedia or you know normal things that are not peer-reviewed uh, like I said it's mainly used by researchers so I recommend you to go with research articles because those are much solid compared to Wikipedia articles so let's say um, if I have a paper um, all right so let me remove all of this stuff I simply go to one of my papers that are written for um, let's say augmented reality so let's say I just go with augmented reality I just paste it here and let's see what does it give me okay so I just click on this research articles and um, let's see what do we get here okay now if you look what happens here is that sometimes you want to read uh, you're writing something and then you want to go to google scholar to find some articles for it but this one is just going to give you an initial overview of some articles that are related to what you are writing um, so if you look here there are a lot of papers that it recommends me which are related to customer interaction with technology or smart technologies or augmented reality or stuff like this so if you look here these are different type of things that you are uh, having here. So what I would do is, let's say if I am interested in, uh, all right, so let's say this one is uh, dementia friendly technology, and new applications of VR, efficient mobile air technology using scalable recognition. I don't want that, it's very technical. All right, so here, 
Now this seems interesting strategies for enhancing customer consumer interaction in retail uh, electronic retailing. So let's say I am interested in this one. So what I do is I can click on this abstract. It just shows me a little bit of the abstract so I can have a look on what it is, some information on where it is published, what are some of the topics that are related to this paper, where's the link for it and what can I do with it so I can find some similar, like I said, it's been mainly artificial intelligence. So this type of stuff also helps the system to develop better or to learn better. Um, let's say I go here and look for something else. Uh, all right. Okay, now this one is interesting. So augment reality system for virtual hijab fitting. Now this one seems more like um, consumer related stuff or whatever. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Here I get something that is very much similar to what I was going to do. The impact of augmented reality technology and tourist satisfaction. So again, I can look into the abstract on what this is. I can also look at the information. This is published by Springer. Um, some of the topics are tourism, multimedia, virtual reality, augmented reality, links, uh, and actions. So what I can do is from links, I can click on one of these links, which is going to take me to the browser, directly to the link for this paper. So it's going to bring me directly to this paper on the website. Obviously, I can look at stuff here, but let's go back to Microsoft document and let's click on here which is find similar articles. So when I click on find similar articles, I hope that I'm gonna get something that is very much similar to what it was. And if you look here, human computer interaction and stuff like this, so I get some more articles that are similar to what it was. So then again, this item just helps you with coming up some of, with some initial articles related to what you are writing, just saves a little bit time and gives you a head start with the stuff. All right. Now, so that was add-in number eight. Now add-in number, uh, um, number nine is uh, another interesting one that can help you with formatting of your papers. Um, and this one is called, uh, let's go to get add-ins. And to store, this is called Perla, P-R-E-R-R-L-A. I'm just gonna click and here. So I click on add, continue. All right, so it puts it right here. Perla. Okay. Now um, let's say I go here and I want to start a new uh, paper. Okay. So here is a few different things. Um, MLA uh, 8 edition research paper. Let's say I just want to start something like APA 7, which is 7th edition research paper. So it's going to put me right here and um, it just gives me some stuff um, for me to put some stuff here. So let's say I just want to put the title of my paper. I'm just going to pick it up from here. Let's say I put this in the title. Okay. And then for author, I'm just going to put my name for institution. I'm just going to put University of South Florida. Uh, this doesn't mean anything. Forget this. And then I click on create research paper. So now what happened is it brought me right here um, into uh, formatted paper okay now obviously uh, this is where you start now this is the type of body of your paper so i'm just gonna do something here and then if i come back to perla you can see that there are a lot of things that i can do i uh, this is just an interesting add-in that can help you with formatting your papers when it comes to submitting them to different journals now these are nine add-ins that i use uh, some of them a lot, some of them not that much, uh, but there's one that I really use and it helps me a lot keeping me on track with, uh, while I'm working. Um, and believe me, it's going to help a lot of you if you are having the issue of uh, procrastination uh, or if you have an issue of, you know, just not focusing on your work or whatever. And this add-in is, it's a small thing. It's just going to help you a lot. Uh, let's go to insert get add-in and then this one is called basically I should be writing so let's go here and uh, I should be writing all right so I'm just going to add this one continue okay so if you see I get it right here right so here's um, 
set right in rule. So I click on this one. Uh, what you can do here is, um, um, let's say you want to write, you can do it individual, you can also do it with groups of people. Um, set up a goal here. So let's say you want to set up a goal. Um, I want to set up a goal that today I want to write 500 words and I set it up. So once you put 500, um, you can just, you know, if you want to write with other people, click on write with other, um, log in, and then you can add some people that you want to work with. So um, let's say I And then another thing that you can do is instead of word setup, you can also put a time and time is, let's say I want to work for uh, two hours. Let's say zero to two hours. I set it up and here I am. So I can just start working uh, with the words. Let's say I write more words. And then it just, you know, so it's just going to track the words and then you know that how much you have written, what was your goal and all that stuff. All right. So um, these are some of the tools that can help you work effectively and efficiently. Now, I uh, know that there might be a lot of more things that many people use. And if there are some more things that you think I did not cover or it may help other people with their work, uh, please put them down in the comments below. Uh, I'll be very happy to know some new things that I also don't know about. And um, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comments below. Um, you know, all these videos um, I make on my YouTube channel are on top of my work um, and also trying to help a lot of other people. So for me, there's no way to know if you like these videos or not until you like the video or share them with anybody that you think may want to see these videos and benefit from them. So I really, really urge you to share this in your networks, but uh, also uh, put a like. And if you're not subscribed and you think that this is bringing value to you, please subscribe to the channel as well.